Hey, how's it going? John here with Marshall Motor Freight. Today we're going to tackle got quite a big project. We're going to tackle the kingpin bushings on this Volvo, this 2007 Volvo 780. And unlike traditional kingpins, uh, the kingpin itself is built into the axle. It's a front end Hendrickson Air Tech Air Rod, Stair Tech, whatever they call it, uh, front axle. <clears throat> so the kingpins are built into the axle, kind of part of the axle. So really, what you do is just replace the bushings. So we're going to tackle it today in the yard. It's quite a big project. So um, I'm trying to document all the steps, and, but I'm not going to be able to record everything because it's just me, but I will record the important parts. So the first thing we're going to have to do is pull off the hub, the hub, the hub covers and the lug nut covers and uh, take off the lug nuts and the spindle nut cover and then the spindle nut so let's get started all right so for the sake of time i'm not going to drag out a lot of these processes i mean this isn't something i mean you pretty much know how to take off if you have these on your truck you know you got to kind of screw off you got to kind of pop off so however your, your truck is set up or the truck you're working on is set up you know you just pop these off and uh so you can get access to the lug nuts and the hub cover. All right, so I got the lug nut covers off. And then we gotta take off the hub cover. And this, this will be this nut you see here. And that's a four and a half inch, eight point socket. Three quarter inch drive. I just, Unscrewed, and of course this isn't going to be that tight because it's just a piece of aluminum so it doesn't have to be that tight all right so there's a snap ring on here get your big set of snap ring pliers to stick in the holes just basically stick that in there pull it off get that snap ring and then this part just comes off <clears throat> Just like a hot thing. All right. I guess something else I should mention is since I'm doing this outside, pretty much everything's going to be done by hand. I'm going to have air tools for some things, but basically, all these lug nuts I'm going to have to bust off by hand. This lock nut I'm going to have to take off by hand, and this is a one inch drive. <laughs> One is drive breaker bar, long breaker bar. And this socket <clears throat> is a uh, two and 13 sixteenths. Now, two and 13 sixteenths. So, it's a little bit of play in there, as you can see. A little bit of play. But <clears throat> so it might be like a 70 millimeter, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Tight. I think these these uh, lock nuts get torqued about 450 for pounds. So they're pretty tight. Start over here. Rotate that. Oh, it's a There we 
we go. I had to stand on it, but I got it. Are you wondering how come I didn't uh, jack up the truck first? There it is. Because, like I said, everything's going to have to be done by hand. So I'm going to need to bust these lug nuts loose, not take them off. Loose before I jack it up. Because once it's in the air, I'm not going to have anything resisting this wheel, keeping this wheel from turning. So. Alright, so. We'll screw it back on for now. Just want to get that loose first and now we'll start taking these lug nuts loose all right so these lug nuts are 33 millimeter like this ain't a big deal to me because when i was in the army we did everything by hand we didn't, <laughs> we didn't have at least when i was in it was in the late 90s, 94 to 97. You bust the lugs off, that's off boost and a half. And five ton trucks with a breaker bar and a cheetah pipe. the idea so let's skip ahead to the next step all right so I got it jacked up in these 22 ton jack stands so you can pick these up from I got these from Harbor Freight but they sell this style jack stand in other places all right so we're gonna proceed to stop pulling. <clears throat> like I said, I already loosened the lug nuts. I just didn't take them off yet. Um, we're going to proceed. We're gonna pull these splash shields off. That way it'll be easier to get inside here because I gotta pull the these airlines. Gotta pull off these brake the brake chambers. Gotta pull off the slack adjusters, gotta pull the brick drums, the drums, you know, all that's gotta come off. So why not have more room to work, right? So that's what we're gonna do now. Alright, so I got the wheel and the brake drum off. So now I'm gonna back off the brakes more. So this is this S cam is pretty much to where I can pop off the brake shoes. I need to pull the S cam off by removing these two pins. <clears throat> Gotta pull this brake chamber. Gotta pull this line. And I probably can actually leave the brake chamber on, on there, but either way I gotta pull. I pull this S cam shaft out. This S cam has been pulled out of the slack adjuster so that this can be split apart and I'm gonna pull the tie rod in and of course pull the hub off the shaft off the spindle so that's what we're gonna do now
It looked like water was getting into this tub. So the back of the slack adjuster is a 7 16 socket.
All right, so as you see, I got it apart. <laughs> nice and sweaty. So as you, like I was saying in the beginning, these kingpins don't come out. They're part of the axle. And I, it's a pretty cool setup how this spindle splits in half which makes this job a lot easier compared to traditional kingpins. Not only do you have to pull the spindle, then you have to pound out, you have to remove, not on here, but on a traditional kingpin setup, you gotta remove two lock pins, then you gotta pound out the kingpin, depending on how seized up it is or was. And as you also saw, I didn't end up taking off the brake chamber, the, the slack adjuster, or the S-cam. <clears throat> I looked at it, I was like, well, be, if I can just get this off as a one complete unit, the, uh, the brake assembly, that I can just put to the side, and as you saw, hang it with bungee cords, which saves time, because imagine, you know, taking these holes off on it. Yeah. Saves time. Uh, with the tie rod in, <clears throat> I ended up I didn't have a tie rod in puller, so what I ended up doing is taking the castle nut in the washer, putting the castle nut in upside down, putting the washer on top, and then hitting it hard but yet gently with the hammer. And basically, you're screwing this on to where it's flush with the threads and that popped pretty much two hits and that popped out so so far so good you know these bolts get these bolts get replaced so you just throw these in the trash because uh, the new kit comes with new bolts and the hex uh, socket it's a half inch so it's a half inch these bolts it's a half inch hex bit so if you're doing this I'll save you from ordering a whole kit like I did or you could just order the half inch or you can order the whole kit whatever I mean it's best just to have the whole kit so that you always have the size you need when you need it all right so Right now we're going to clean this up. I get this shim off of here. There we go. So we pull these shims. One. And then there's a bearing down here. Now the issue I was having, it was play in the kingpins, but not a, a lot. I mean, like this side has side to side play, like a little bit of side to side play, and the other side has up and down play. And on, but on this side, I had a regular tire wear on the outer tread and the middle tread. And what happened is the not the middle. So now you got, you got the outer rib, you got the next rib over. That would wear out faster than the rest of the tire. So hopefully this will also help with that. Uh, all right. That bearing. Also had hard steering. So it would steer, and it would get easy and hard, and then easy and hard. And sometimes it felt like there was a lot of play in the steering. 
then I replaced the steering gearbox, I replaced the steering shaft, I re the U joint on the steering shaft. I mean, it helped a little bit, but that problem was still there. Pick this up, make it all nice and pretty. So now, let's like clean this up a little bit. So next will be to drive out the old bushings. Measure these kingpins, make sure they inspect. And driving the or cleaning everything up. And then drive in the new bushings. And follow the steps. Because the bushing kit comes with instructions, so you gotta follow those. You know, you gotta yeah. we'll, we'll talk about when I get there. So let's jump to the next step. Alright. So now we're going to measure the kingpins to see, well, one, if they inspect, and two, to get the measurements because the bushings, when you ream them out, these to be 0 .001 inches bigger than the kingpins. So. Okay. So we'll go with 1.806 for the bottom. Same for the top. No point zero six. All right. So now we're gonna start pulling out the old bushings. See right here. We need to get out. I got out there retaining I'm gonna pull this grease zerk zerk 11 millimeter we gonna pound out this Pushing and seal.
So if you look at this side of the, this is from the lower bushing from the right side. So if you see, if you get the light, the sun in there, good. that side is good but as you rotate it. right there you can almost see the brass coming through that side is worn so yeah With these new bushings should get rid of that Tight steering, loose steering phenomenon, and also that irregular tire wear. So now I got the bushings out on this side. I mean, on this, the spindle. Now I'm gonna clean up the lower one, the lower knuckle, and start putting it back together, putting new bushings in and all that. So that's where we'll go to next. All right, so we got the steering knuckles cleaned up, got the bushings you know, where they go in cleaned up. And short. So yeah, we got that all nice and cleaned up. And I just used a Y wheel, ran that in and out maybe twice. So now we're ready to start driving the new bushings in, reaming out the bushings, and then uh putting the seal and the caps in place so let's get started all right so these are the new bushings let's compare that to the old ones new bushing old bushing see the vast difference you know you can see the wear so got a bushing driver see how that fits on there perfect and you basically just drive it in so it's flush well I guess I need a hammer right and as you see I got this setup here so of course Preferably, you want to use a vise, but I'm doing this outside without a vise. And I've got these two blocks of wood supporting it. You know, it does the job. So yeah, let's hammer this in. Make sure it's straight.
right, now we can ream out this one. So if you remember the kingpin size was 1.08, no, 1.806. So the bushing has to be 0 0.001. smaller or bigger or nine. all right uh, so I got the other the right side back together I know I didn't show me assembling the right side but I'm gonna show me assembling the left side and I want to show you uh, how the how bad the left side it was or is so basically when I split the knuckle from the kingpin it came out the the, the baron came out in two pieces and that shows you you know look at how bad that was of course you know water and dirt and grime over time got all into this barren as it came apart you got it. and that's why the butt the truck would uh and when i was steering it would bind and it, the steering wasn't smooth it'll be really loose then it'd get real tight then it'll get loose and tight so the steering was uh erratic so, once we put new bushings and bearings on this side, I think this truck will be steering like brand new. So, let's continue. I'm going to show... I'm going to show me pounding out these bushings and putting in the new bushings and the measuring it. Well, I'll show the measurements on the other side. So, I'm going to show... Uh, me basically putting this side together and that will give you if you plan on tackling this project which requires a lot of tools and patience but you get it done if you have the patience and hopefully this video can help so let's continue Okay, so I got the dial indicator set up, the magnetic base one, and the jack underneath, with no pressure, but the jack underneath the spindle. And what you're checking for is 0.008 to 0.011 of end play. And that's the range. So you want to jack it up to the point where, basically to the point of lifting the axle up off the jack stands and then checking the dial to see where we are. Jack is the axle is lifted. The way I might have to reposition this jack. It was giving a good read and then it went back the other way. So I think this wood block is
that's at zero. Should be able to see the needle moving, maybe. So you see the end play is not in range, so it's a little bit below where we need it to be. So you loosen these up, so you get it be higher, so get your rubber mallet. Tap this up until it's too high. Tap. So that's that point zero nine right there. That right at ten. Point ten, oh, yeah, point zero, oh, point zero, ten, ten hundredths. So <clears throat> we'll lock it in right there, and that's basically how you set your end plate. All right, so now you would grab your new cap screws and take out. one of the old ones Tighten the other one. To lock that in. Alright, once you got both cap screws in, you want to torque it to 188 foot pounds. Start driving these in. Well, put Loctite on these three. All right. 
So I put the brake spider back on. I put in a new ABS sensor. should drive like a dream I've been dealing with this steering issue for a couple of years I replaced the steering gearbox I replaced the steering shaft I think I brought that up before I replaced hoses yeah. kept checking my tie rod ends and drag link to figure out if they're bad, but they all came back as tight. You know. So Volvo quoted this job as 20 hours, a 20 hour job. Um, me doing it like this in the yard, I would say I'm not done yet, of course, but it's about at this point, I'm probably right around a little over 20 hours. So, I mean, consider the labor rate at like Volvo is like $200 an hour, and a labor rate at your private shop, you know, like a truck shop can be anywhere from $100 to $150, $160 an hour, or if not more. So you figure, you figure $1,500 to two grand to do the kingpins on, well, $1,500 to about four grand to do the kingpins on a truck like this at a dealership or a shop. So, I had most of the tools, but there was some, like, I didn't have those jack stands. I didn't have certain tools I didn't have and had to order. So I probably spent maybe $1,500, $1,000 to $1,500 in tools I needed. So I think I made out now. Sure, my time has a value too. You know, I preferred to take it into a shop but some people didn't even want to touch it because they never did this kind of setup before i mean well, of course volvo would have did it but i was i was trying to not pay four grand so
All right, John here. So we, it's all finished. Got both sides done with the kingpin bushings. Um, I didn't feel it was necessary to show you how to put the brakes back on and the drums, put the hub on. Uh, that's pretty much stuff that you should do. You should know already, well, you should basically have an idea how to do. Uh, so basically, you want to make sure you're torquing the hub nut. Make sure that you what's left is the torque for me to torque the lugs down. And I want to show that you know everything's looking nice and fresh. You know, I cleaned it up, took a lot of the old grime and grease out, and. And here's the the right side. The other side was the left left side. You know, took a lot of that old grease out, <clears throat> cleaned it up, making it look real nice. Greased it. So yeah. So like I said, I didn't feel it was necessary to detail every step. Just make sure you're talking everything and. Uh, Hopefully you got some value out of this video that shows you basically that it, it can be done. You don't necessarily need a shop to do kingpins, well at least this setup. I mean, you know, depending on how seized up the kingpins are, if you're doing traditional kingpins where you gotta bang out, bang the pin out through the axle, that you might need a shop because you might have a need to torch it or have two people where one person holds the driver and the other person's <laughs> the other person slams on it with a sledgehammer but with this setup I think it's a whole lot easier because it just splits in half you replace the bushings you put it back together torque everything down and it does come with instructions so the kingpin kit does come with instructions so you're not left high and dry as to what you need to do I mean there's some stuff that's you should already know how to do if you're mechanically inclined but when it comes to the specifics of doing these kingpins or the bushings Hendrickson does include instructions on you know special tools you need processes and procedures torque specs what you need to check for uh, you know as you see so that's basically it so I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, like, share, subscribe. Uh, check out the description box for some other value and some other things that can help you out. But that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.